everyone, part I said, welcome to part two of our Ravel 125th Shelby 69 GT500 video build. So, we dealt with the body shell in the first part. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Glad how that turned out. Lovely colour. Nice huge 2K job. And that is sat in that display case, curing. It's been there for over a week. So, yeah, we're good to go on that one. Today, we're going to assemble all our engine and the running gear, the chassis and what have you, uh, and get our wheels uh, sorted as well. So, a bit of a strange one today because the way I normally work is we get all the engine built if there is one, chassis, running gear, put it all together, get it on its wheels. We can't really do that today because of the way the Revel kit goes together. We need the body shell on before we can add some of the last bits of suspension. So, let's have to wait for now. So, we're kind of going to stop near the end and not get all the chassis fully finished. But that'll do us for today because we've still got a half hour video out of it. And then we'll come back in part three and get all the interior done. Then probably part four. I don't think we get it all done in part three. So I think there'll be a part four as well. We've got all that beautiful body shell all prepped and sanded and polished and everything. And then we can go to final assembly and get this kit finished. So, yeah. So a bit of a weird one today. Not fully assembled chassis and what have you, but... I put a bit of work to get out of the way and a little bit of detail into the engine as well. So sit back, have a cup of tea and uh, put your feet up and watch. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. Right, so straight back in, as usual, cutting parts off the sprues. We've got our Tamiya side cutters, and today we're going to do with all the engine and the running gear. Now, because of the way the Revel kits assemble, there's only so much of the engine um, suspension that we can assemble until we get the body ready for assembly. So not a massive amount to show today. But we're going to get some of the engine parts off, clean them up, get them glued together, get some priming on, a little bit of paint, and get the most of the engine built up. And then we'll do with our wheels at the end, uh, which we'll have a little bit of a chat about when we get there. So, yeah, typical Revel parts. Um, we've got some chrome, some white plastic. Um, we're probably going to keep the chrome parts because uh, the chrome is actually not that bad on this kit, to be honest. It looks pretty good. Uh, and clean up is exactly like usual. We're cutting the parts off with our Tamiya side cutters, getting as clean a cut as we can, and then we're coming with our UMP sanders and give everything a good clean up and get everything mounted and ready for primer. So it's nice to build an engine. Not a lot of the kits um, from other companies like Tamiya that come with engines, only a few of their kits do. Uh, whereas nearly all the Revel kits come with an engine. It is nice to, to build them. Um, it's definitely something I didn't enjoy at one point, but I'm enjoying it more and more now as uh, I progress and build through these models. We've got a distributor uh, with wiring to add to from Scale Production, which we'll add a little bit later on. Um, and uh, hopefully we can have a little bit more detail. Not a lot. We're not going Skyline-esque on this thing, um, but we can add a few more little bits and bobs, maybe the engine bay at a later date. But like I say, because of the way Revel kits assemble, uh, we can't fully put everything together. So we cut all the parts off. We're just using our Stadler HB number 2 pencil to check all the parts off. Just get them off circling them because you don't want to get everything to paint, primer, ready for assembly, and then realize we're missing bits. Done it before. It's very easily done. So I'm just going through and circling all the parts that I've got there. Um, I would recommend doing this. It saves a bit of hassle because there's always that time. You've been in the spray booth. you spent about an hour priming or painting. Get back to the desk, sit there thinking, great, that's all that done. I think you look for instructions, I think, ah, crap, that needed painting as well. So I like to do this. I normally do it as a go, uh, but with this type of instruction, it's quite hard to keep a track of the part as you go. So I just went through, cut off all the engine parts, and then we circled them as we went. UMP Sanders now, we've got our 400 customizable. It's going to clean up all our chassis. Uh, quite nice clean up on this. Not really a lot on it at all. Uh, kit's actually quite a nice kit. It's not really that old, I don't think. I think it's 2001. So it's not really an ancient Revel kit. And yeah, not bad at all. We do have some Revel uh, lettering to remove, which I'm just going over there. 
uh, raised embossed lettering, but that's easily removed and gotten rid of. And again, just simple clean up on all the parts, seam lines to remove, burrs where it's been connected to the sprue, just really easy clean up, nice and simple. And we're just using a combination of the 400 and 240 uh, customizables and the buffer to clean everything up. Pretty quite nice and quick, easy assembly on this. What we'll then do is we'll assemble as much together as we can for paint. So on the engine, there's about six components that are all painted in Ford engine blue. So we'll get those glued together. That could all be painted as one unit and everything else can be mounted and painted in its, well, necessary colors as we go. So like I say, a little bit of cleanup, nothing too bad. Like I say, a bit of pretty new kit, it's quite clean. But just go around, make sure everything cleaned up. And then we'll come to part out the exhaust. They're going to need gluing together. So we just dry fit it, make sure we're going the right way around. Keep checking our instructions. Not a big fan of these older Revel instructions. They're a bit confusing at times. The newer ones are really good though. And the newer kits. We've got our Tamiya Extra Thin. This is my Tamiya Plastiwell 50-50 mix. In our UMP holder. Which you can get from umpretail.com. All the links for all the products I show and use are in the description of this video. So you can go down there, click on it, and you're more than likely to find them in there. If you can't find them, pop me a message on YouTube and I'll let you know what they are. So we're just going to fill this. It needs quite a bit of pressure to get the gap to close on this. So just put a bit of glue in there, let it melt the plastic for a minute, give it a good push together, and then get a clip. We've got these cheap two-inch clips. I've got a picture of these in a little bit for you. You pick these clips up really cheap from virtually anywhere. Uh, but eBay, they're cheap. They're a few pounds for a set of 12. And they're quite a useful clip. They're a bit vicious. They can spring off. So just take your time. But we're just going to glue the top, bottom and side. And then clamp it together. Put it to one side to dry. And we come back later and sand it all smooth. Same on the engine. We're just going to assemble it all together. Really nice fit on this. Quite a nice joint all the way around. Grab our Tamiya Extra Thin Plastic World Mix. And we're just going to glue all around it. Give it a little bit of pressure. Give it a little bit of a clamp. Again, put it to one side to dry for a couple of hours. And then we can come back, sand it pretty smooth, and then get everything mounted for primer. Like I say, pretty nice kit from Revel. Seems nice and clean. Everything I've put on so far has fitted together really well. So a nice pleasant change. See, there are the clips. So you get them in there. They have little rubber protectors on the front, which lasts about five minutes. Um, you can angle the ends of them. They're very soft metal, so you can angle them to grip things better. Uh, being cheap manufacturers, some of them are sprung heavier than others. So you can pick and choose where you need a tighter grip uh, and a looser grip. So quite handy, really. And uh, yeah, they are a very useful tool with those bulldog clips and clothes pegs. They'll cover most of your clamping needs. Again, our fan radiator assembly. A little bit of glue each side. A little bit of glue. Push it together. Make sure you've got everything the right way around on your instructions. And then various mounting methods. We've got a bit of Loctite super glue on a cocktail stick. Uh, on parts out of this, we can use our little battery-powered drill with a cocktail stick shoved in. This drill you can't get anymore, unfortunately. So I can't tell you where it got it from. And then using clips, we can mount the rest of uh, all the parts. We've got a UMP grade primer. Uh, so we're going to spray this at 25 PSI put our, through our 0.35 needle nozzle apex. Uh, and we're going to put several light like, coats down, building it up. Now, I went grey today. I normally go black and everything, but we had some blue parts to do as well. So I thought we'll just do grey because we can spray black and blue over them both. And the metal work, no bother at all. I used to prime nearly everything in grey, but went to black quite a while back. Um, but I do like the grey primer. It covers really well. Whether it be UMP or the Tamiya, it does spray really, really well. So a couple of light coats on everything. Working our way around, spraying all the parts. On your first coat, don't hose the paint on. Just put a mist coat down. Don't aim to get it all covered because if you're not careful, it will run. Occasionally, you may need to give it a bit of a blast through. There we go. Get a bit of tip dry. 
And there we are. Yeah, just occasionally give it a full blast and it'll clearly tip dry off the front of the airbrush. And then we come to our chassis, larger parts. Somebody commented about my spraying technique. Well, I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, on parts that really matter like body shells, I use proper spray technique, i.e. starting the air off the airbrush, ending the air off, sorry, starting the air off the part on the airbrush, ending it off the part, stop, start, coming back. On parts like this, to me, I've been spraying long enough. I know what I can and can't get away with. And on this, yeah, it works absolutely flawless. On a body shell, I will use perfect spray technique. Now, we've got various Tammy LP paints. These are going to be thin, approximately 60% thinner to paint. Varying on the colour, we're going to use our Apex 0.35 needle nozzle at 18 psi. And we've got LP6 blue. This looks a good approximate colour for our Ford engine blue. We're not with our Badger paint mixer. And we're going to mix it with some lacquer thinner with retarder. Like I say, about 60% thinner. And then put a few light coats down over our engine. Looks a pretty good match for the colour. From what I've read online, Ford managed to, well, paint their engines in multiple colours. Basically what they had at hand. So I don't think there's any true Ford engine colour. There's bound to be somebody out there that's going to try and prove me wrong. But I did a bit of research online and the colour varies from car to car. So this is the colour we're going for. And to my eye, it looked pretty good. At the end of the day, we're building a model. We're not building an exact scale replica. So you want to pick and choose your colour for yourself. That's the way it works. So a couple of light coats with this. As you say, with the lacquers, you can really go to town on the paint. It's very, very forgiving. And that, that's, well, I would call that two coats quite easily in one going. By the time you work around the model and come back, it's all done. But we're not hosing it on as such, but we're getting good coverage. Work our way around, getting all those little angles around the air cleaner. Like so. And give it another light coat round. Probably looks like I'm putting a lot more paint down than I actually am. And then we can come in and put a final coat around our engine. Very nice blue, really nice paints. They go well for our Apex. They really do work well. And they're probably my favourite go-to paints along with the Tamiya TS spray cans and gravity colours. We've got some LP, I think it's 51 orange now for our oil filter. So we'll spray up the whole thing and then we'll detail paint the top part of it later. And then we've got some LP61, I believe it is. Which is the metallic grey. Which, as I said in one of my other videos, I'm going to move away from using the AK Extremes and try and solely use the Tamiya LP Metallics. And that's my, my plan now. I like the AK Extremes, but being enameled, they do stay rather tacky. And I found when you're handling parts, you can whir the paint off. These being lacquer, they dry a lot quicker. And um, yeah, this is my go-to paint now. So several light coats over all the parts. It's a good steel colour. Then we've got some Tamiya TS29, decanted, thinner of Tamiya lacquer thinner, about 20-30% for our 0.35 Apex at 18 PSI. And why am I using this? Well, LP5 is a bit difficult to get at the minute. So on larger parts like this, I'm using uh, TS29 because it's a bit more readily available. It's not a bad semi-gloss black. It's not as good as LP5, but it's certainly not far off it. And uh, we'll save the bottled LP5. Um, for our smaller parts that you can see in a bit more detail. So all the parts painted, they're all put to one side to dry. We've got some Vallejo Model Air Silver, a Series 7 Winsor Newton brush, and we've masked up the hose, and we're going to paint some hose clamps on. So with some of the Tamiya 1, 2, 3 mil tape, uh, we're just masking it off, paint the silver, and then on our auxiliary belts, we've got some Vallejo Model Colour Black, Another Winsor Newton brush. I'm just going to detail paint this up a little bit as well. So I'm assembling the engine now. So this is all dried. We've got our Loctite Perfect Pen CA glue. One of my favourite CA glues. Using a cocktail stick, we're going to start sticking some of the engine parts on. So we detail painted uh, the top of that oil filter with some Vallejo Model Colour Black again. 
So add a little bit of visual interest and a bit of depth if we can. And then we'll add our, I think it's the water pump underneath. And then put all our auxiliary belts on, uh, alternator, etc, etc on the top. And then when we've got all this assembled, we can add a wash to it all as well. So our exhaust manifold goes on. Just refer to instructions. You see mine in front of me there. Just keep looking at them. Make sure you get everything the right way. Get the right part in the right order. And just take your time. Make sure you don't get any glue on your fingers. As you can see, very rare sight. I've got a jumper on. Very rarely, rarely see that. Not feeling great that day. A little bit cold. So chuck the jumper on. Um, pop our carbs in. Well, carb. Into the top. A little bit of CA glue. And then the other side of our exhaust as well. A little bit tricky, but just hold it in place. And a little bit of glue on top, and we can get our covers on. Now, should I strip these to leave them chrome? I quite like them in bright chrome. I think it look quite good in the engine bay. I probably struggle to beat that chrome. In any durable finish so for me i'm quite happy to leave them uh, if you don't want quite as high shine you can use a little trick i saw on another youtube video the other day um, of using a flat clear to dull the chrome a little bit and i'll show that near the end of the video when we're dealing with our wheels so starter motor in as well engine's starting to look good now nice contrast of colors and shines and then we've got a distributor on top. So this is a scale production white metal distributor. So we've got to drill out the top where the kit part goes. The white metal parts are sprayed in semi-gloss black. Drop it into the hole. Give it a little push of our tweezers gently. Again, using the Tammy decal tweezers as I like to. Now on the kit uh, block, there's little plastic parts sticking out that imitate, I'm guessing, the spark plugs. We want to remove those because we're going to wire this up. So we've got our trumpeter chisel, and our Tamiya pin vise, and a 0.5mm uh, shanked drill bit. I'm just going to open all these up along the heads. So eight in total, V and a V8. So a little bit of gentle drilling. Now you're going to snap your bits. Drill through, blow it off. If there's any bits of plastic in there, remove them with tweezers, but just go around, do them all. And then we can come in and wire it up. I'm not going to show me drilling every hole because there's no need to. But I'll show you me drilling a couple. Just get get the drill bit in place, a little bit of pressure, and then just gently use the pin vise. I like the Tamiya pin vise, it's ball raced, so the handle's nice and smooth. And uh, yeah, good quality. And there we go. So that's everything cleaned up. And then we've got our wire. So a nice scale production distributor, it's not pre wired. I've had the pre-wired ones before, they're just as good, but no real hardship in doing it this way. Uh, I had a choice of yellow or red wire, and the vote in the hangouts was yellow, so I went with yellow. So it's going to test fit to make sure it fits in the hole, which it does absolutely perfect. And then we're going to pop all eight leads in before we attach them to the distributor. So a little dab of our perfect pen from Loctite. And just place it in the hole. Hold it for a second. Grab our wire cutters. These were a great present from my buddy Andy Callis from America a while back. And I thank you, Andy. I use them all the time. As Andy said, they're fantastic for cutting metal. And he's not wrong. And I would just do each one of the HD leads. Same technique on each and every one. Dab of glue. Pop it in. Dab of glue. Pop it in. Cut it. Till we're all done so there we go there's one side done and then there's both sides done so we just leave them sticking out like this all kind of equal length and then we can get them all over to the distributor in a nice neat and tidy fashion so we put the closest ones first so we just bend it round line it up look for the point where we need to bend it we've got a tamiya bending pliers here 
You don't need it to bend this. I just found it as a handy tool to do. Let it go past the distributor a little bit and then give it a 90 degree bend. And then we can snip that shorter. Line it up, cut it short. Now I did originally strip the wire and find out I didn't need to. Uh, I had to drill out the distributor. It's just white metal, so we can use our same shank drill bits. Drill it out and we just put the sheath wire straight in there. So just snip it to size, like so. And then a little dab of CA glue on the wire. Grab our high grade precision Tamiya tweezers and just slot it in to the distributor cap hole. And there we go, give it a little push home, hold it for a second, let the CA glue grab it, and then we can work our way around and do the other seven. As you can say, exactly the same technique, just bend it, dab a CA glue, pop it in, and I go from each side, closest to furthest, and then turn it around, go to the other side, and use half the distributor on each side. Like so, turn the tweezers around, give it a little push home, and there we are. And there we go, there is all eight of them in place, all nicely equally spaced. If you wanted to, you can make a clip for them too. But I was happy to leave them like this because they look pretty good. Definitely adds a bit of realism to it. Yes, it's probably in the wrong firing order. Yes, somebody has told me that before. Do I care? No. So don't bother telling me again, because I really don't care. It's in the wrong firing order. Somebody did actually point that out on a very old video of mine that I had the firing order wrong. Really? Some people need to get a life. And there we go. This air cleaner placed on temporarily, because we can't pop it in place just yet. And the engine's looking pretty good. So we can now add a wash to it. We've got our Tamiya black panel line wash, enamel-based wash. As you can see, I've got my Tamiya Optivisor on there as well. These old eyes struggling a little bit now. We're just going to go around and add a pin wash to any raised or recessed detail we can. Let it dry, wipe off the excess, and again, hopefully add a little bit of depth to the engine as well. Like I say, if you can get a wash in there, get the wash in there for sure. Matter if you add too much, you're putting an enamel product over lacquer. So this will wipe off really easy later with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits and a cotton bud. So just get it in there. Just be aware around CA glue parts. It may release the part. And then we've got some grey panel line wash for all our black parts as well to give those a little bit of detail too. It's a simple little thing, but it does add a bit of depth. Certainly adds a bit of interest to the engine. So we'll leave that to dry, wipe it off where required, and then come back a bit later on. We've got our Loctite Perfect pen again. We're going to add three dabs of CA glue on all the engine mounting points. Okay, four, five, maybe maybe six dabs then. We'll get there in the end. Come on, Paul, hurry up. There we are. Six dabs. And then carefully place our engine in. Oh, no, we're going for seven. Seven. That was a big increase on three, wasn't it? <laughs> so seven dabs of CA glue. And then we'll pop our engine in its mounts. Now, like I say, we can't assemble all the running gear because simply it can't be done without the body shell on because some of it's the mount points for the parts. So we can get the engine in. We can get the rear diff in and rear suspension. Uh, and then we can get the exhaust in as well, which we're showing here. There's the exhaust going in. It's all pretty straightforward assembly. It's mostly black, so there's not really a lot to look at. Um, so it's all there, really. It's in. Only three or four parts. Really simple to do. So we'll come back to that later. So we've got our kit wheels here. These are the aftermarket larger rims. Now, the chrome was pretty good out the um, box. But I thought we used some LP23 flat clear, thinned with some Tamiya lacquer thinner, through the 0.35 apex at 18 psi and i've seen people use this trick um, to dull the chrome so i tested it on 
The other set of rims that are in the kit. I like the look because it still looks nice and chrome, nice and smooth, but it loses that almost toy-like look of the wheels. So we'll give them a spray up, give them several coats. How much you put on is entirely down to you. I just added it as I went until I was happy with the finish. So I'm just putting light coats on them all, doing each wheel individually, and we'll keep going around till we're happy. And then let that dry for a few hours. And then we can do the back of the wheel. Now the back of the wheel through the rim looks like the brake disc. So I decided to spray these in LP61, thinned with Tamiya lacquer thinner to kind of imitate a brake disc through it. Thought it was the best thing you can do rather than leaving a chrome. It was either that or painted black, but I thought that would look a bit odd. So we did that. And again, let everything dry. And then we can come back in and assemble. So there's tires for front and rear. The rear tires are bigger. The bigger rims as well so make sure you get them the right side and right size follow your instructions and you don't even need to glue these together these just friction fit in really well so we've got each side in place like so there we are looking good we've still got a nice chrome shine but it's not overly chrome like it was before it's a really good trick i can't remember where i saw it it was one of the american car guys builders so if you've shown that trick in your video and you're watching, thank you. It's a good trick and it does take away some of that excessive shine. You can use any flat clear you wanted, dual coat, Winsor Newton, but to me, yeah, it looks a lot better. So happy with how they're looking. They're looking really, really good. So we can add our road wheel nuts studs in there. Using LP61 again on a cocktail stick. I'm just going to touch it. My head's in the way, my device is there. Look at all that grey hair. Oh, shocking. Terrible grey hair. I don't know. But it's better than being bald, isn't it, I suppose? So, yeah, adding our wheel nuts in. Just a little dab of paint on the top of the nut. Don't let it run or catch anywhere else. Just keep it in that, hence the optivizer. And then we can come in at the end. Once that's dried again, look at my grey head again. And add a Tamiya panel line wash to all the recessed detail inside. And there we go. They're looking really good. Very happy with that uh, flatted look. I'll pop a picture up as well so you can have a little look. Um, but yeah, it definitely takes away that toy-like chrome look, which I wasn't happy with at all. Um, and yeah, I think it's a big difference. So well worth testing. Might not be for everybody. Um, I think on the exterior chrome of the car, we'll leave that bright, shiny chrome. Um, but we'll deal with that in our later parts. There we have it then. There we have it then. A different, so there we go. Um, yeah, it's uh, looking all right. Engines come together well. Happy with the blue I picked. Happy with it, the way it looks wired. Um, glad we took the chrome off those wheels, the high shy chromes. I think they definitely do look better with a little bit of, well, dullness to them. Um, and it's something well worth trying yourself. If you do try or you've done it, let me know. If you're doing a different technique or whatever, let me know as well. Always interested to hear different people's opinions. Uh, but it's worked well, and they should look really good now on the uh, the car as well. Excited to get this one going, but I'm also working on the Skyline at the same time. So it's a case in point now. Do I crack on and uh, carry on with this and get this finished? Because this is probably not far off being done. Want to get the interior done or do another skyline vid? Let me know in the comments. Should I crack on with this and we get this done? Two more parts left on this and it's all done and dusted. Um, or should I do another skyline? Come back to this. Decisions, decisions, hey. This is, and we've got another build in the pipeline. The road car build GB started as well. And I want to build my Revel uh, 850 BMW as well. So it's all non stop. I said I was going to try and video build everything, and I'm going to try. Um, so, yeah, there we are. So, if you're watching, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and hit that bell notification. Leave a comment. Love all the comments. They really spare me on the builds. Don't get a chance to reply to you all, but I do try and heart them all uh, to show that I've read them. I do read them all and do appreciate them all as well. Even the critique over pencil sharpeners camera angles from videos eight years ago all the random comments i get i do appreciate them all uh and as always check out intensive scale model facebook page and forum umpretail.com you get a lot of products i use in my videos 
Uh, check it out live the bench page and the offer hangout group. And of course, check out my Paul ISM Facebook page and Instagram page as well, where all my personal modern work is shared. I'll be back very soon with a video. No idea where it's going to be, but I'll be back very soon. So take care, everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye.